Our transit down the Florida coast has brought the U-105 great success. In just 48 hours, the U-105 has sunk four cargo ships and one tanker. Our total tonnage is now 27,000 tons sent to the bottom of the ocean. Across the world, our Japanese allies bound for Port Moresby were engaged by a United States carrier group. The battle was fought entirely by aircraft. The Japanese aircraft carrier Shoho was sunk as well as the U.S. carrier Lexington. The Japanese invasion force turned back. And he said it. He did the intro. Welcome everybody back to more Sama Hunter 3. As my watch officer just stated, we do have a ship spotted bearing 344 degrees, and it looks like it might be heading straight for us. Let's see where she is. There she is. It looks like just a shadow out there on the horizon. Let's go ahead and get an estimated range real fast. She's 9,400 meters away. Very close. So there is a pretty thick fog layer. Let's go ahead and go down to periscope depth rapidly, though. All ahead of flank. Let's get under. Because according, my watch crew thinks it is a destroyer. It is currently heading northeast, so we're going to go ahead and plot a track for that. And honestly, it might be going to investigate these ship sinkings. Maybe they're assigning warships to patrol this uh, this route that I have been following. Because this is certainly a merchant lane here. And uh, well, I'm not surprised. And he's heading fast. Oh shit, that's not good. Uh oh. Periscope depth, all ahead, one third, please. Rig for silent running. Just right off the bat. And I realized I forgot to reload my torpedoes after our last engagement. You know what? That ship is still pretty far away. Secure from silent running. Let's go ahead and load those bad boys real fast just in case we need them. And that's why I didn't. It. The sea state's too harsh. Okay. Then go back to sleep. We'll just have to make do with only two torpedoes loaded at the moment. And the forward tubes. Tubes two and three there. Now let's see. I want a hydrophone operator on station immediately. And let's see. Let's switch out our crew. Okay. Go ahead and follow the nearest warship. There he is. Okay, yep, that is most definitely a warship. As far as I can tell, let's see, is there any lurkers behind him? Okay, it looks like just the, the single vessel way out there. I don't know if you folks can see that too well. Let's go ahead and make a slight turn. Let's make our course 210. And we'll see. I'll see if I can uh, get a shot off. I wonder if he, she spotted me. Let's go ahead and see. It seems like she's cruising along at a pretty steady pace. I don't I don't think the ship's necessarily going flank. I think we might be okay, although we are mighty close to its track. Uh, there is plenty of water here. I'm not even going to ping, because I'm certain of that. Looks like the enemy ship is just maintaining her current course and speed, which is perfect for us. Let's go ahead and secure for silent running and make our turns. Let's go ahead and try to bring the boat down to a uh, relatively deep depth. Just deep enough so where we don't start breaching the surface. And let's bring speed down to around one knot. Just make a hole in the water. Let's come to our scope here. Can you give me a, like, yeah, zero two zero thereabouts. There she is. Okay, four stacker. It looks like a Clemson class. What do I have loaded? Oh, perfect. Lock on target. Let's go ahead. It's probably American. Clemson class. Perfect. 1,000 tons. 1,200 tons. If I'm rounding, length is 95 meters. We're going to use the Uyag here to establish a speed. I'm guessing she's going around 10 knots at the moment. Draft is very shallow, though. 3.2 meters. That is... Not good. We'll launch one. We'll set it for magnetic. And we'll set the torpedo depth for 3.2 meters. We'll set it for three and a half. Maybe three and three quarters. Yeah, that should be fine. One torpedo. And uh, we'll go ahead and lay in wait here for her to get a bit closer. And, you know, this should be good actually right now. Alright, let's go ahead and establish speed. She's actually moving 
quite a bit faster than I anticipated. All right, wow. Yeah, she's hauling ass. Look at that bow wake. I don't even know if I'll be able to get a shot off here. And passed already. Oh boy. So, okay, she's going over 15 knots if this is to be believed. Let's check again. Yeah, probably close to 17 knots. Ooh, I don't know if I even want to risk a shot. Recording, yeah, she's going medium. I guess that's medium for a warship. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and hopefully she passes right over us. Hello there, down scope. I'm not even going to mess with it. Let's go ahead and start moving and bring this boat down to around 25 meters. It's crazy to ad attack a destroyer anyway. And she's just going to pass right along like nothing ever happened. How lucky they are. Almost. I thought she started deviating from her course. Alright, go ahead and continue on our course. Let's go down to around 60 meters so we can reload those torpedoes in the meantime. And she is just sailing onward. Perfect. Alright, perfect. Let's go ahead and bump up our speed and get some men in the forward torpedo room and start reloading those bad boys while we are deep enough to do so. Since the weather, as you can see from the periscope view, is a little, a little choppy. Not the best. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and reload these bad boys. We only have two more torpedoes in the forward reserves and then we'll have to get torpedoes from the external reserves, which will require better weather, better weather and also safety. Uh, two, one thing, one of those I don't have, and also I do not want to be this close to America whenever I start reloading those. That's asking for trouble. Okay, so that is the current situation. I'm going to continue on our course. We should hit Key West, I believe, in about 24 hours on the surface, and then we'll proceed to our patrol grid here, which is DB-75. Piddle paddle around here, and then move a little northwest towards these uh, ports here near Louisiana and Mississippi and should be exciting we'll see we will see so I'm gonna go ahead and continue onward that was a nice bit of action to start off the episode with I normally don't do that too often but uh, that was quite cool alright so I'll go ahead and cut here and see you guys soon okay just a brief little update here we are currently cruising at two-thirds speed and we're looping around Florida now it's around 3:30 in the afternoon as well and as you can see, weather conditions have really, really uh, lightened up. There's still a little bit of wind. I can hear it occasionally blowing across the conning tower. But overall, it is quite pleasant. Pleasant enough to where we can use our deck gun if need be. And all of our torpedoes are loaded, by the way. Also, looking at our deck gun, it looks like we have 64 rounds of ammunition left. I'm debating uh, tonight reloading some of our external reserves. They're all G7As, they're the steam propulsion. It might be an absolutely terrible idea, but uh, I think I might try to do it tonight. We'll see, we will see. I might just bugger off into the Gulf of Mexico a little bit and uh, try to reload, but who knows, maybe just down here. It's a little hot actually now that I'm looking at the map. We are still quite far away from our objective, so it might be another few nights until I reload those bad boys. But we're currently pretty close to Key West. Let's see, around, uh, yeah, 90 uh, kilometers away. So I almost said nautical miles. I've been playing some 104. <laughs> anyway, we're just gonna keep on chugging along. Just wanted to give you guys a little weather update. The crew is doing well, except this guy. I'm working him to death. And we'll go ahead and switch them out here. Uh, yeah, everyone's starting to get a little bit tired here, but I I'm trying to rotate everyone in and out somewhat efficiently although I'm pretty bad at that so uh, we'll do our best we'll do our best anyway the UF 105 is going to continue onward and uh, we'll search for more merchant ships well 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 what do we have here you hear that I don't know it might be a little there you go you should be able to hear that now that is a merchant ship apparently moving away three four one degrees so let's go ahead and plot that out there because I am going to try to intercept it as you can see we are very close to our patrol grid as a matter of fact this vessel is in our patrol grid DB 75 
I was getting up here and I was like, man, where are all the ships? It's been quite a while, but as uh, luck would have it, here we are. And the ship is indeed heading away. It looks like she's heading northwest here. Let's go ahead and try to plot a uh, general rough estimation. Yeah, something like that. So it looks like she's on a heading of probably closer to 280, I think. We'll go ahead and plot that for now and go ahead make my course let's go ahead and just turn on a course of 280 as well and we'll prepare to hit the surface we are currently at periscope depth is there two of them no i guess not okay i'll head two thirds oops fat fingered the record button surface to boat please up top and let's go ahead and whoa man you really need to put on a hat there is something odd going on there. Okay, anyway. Um, he's our mechanic, or our machinist, so he really... Just get in there. I don't want to hear you. I don't want to see you again. Uh, you stay in your... <laughs> in the diesel room. <laughs> don't come out. Terrifying. Alright, we're going to go ahead and surface, and we're going to go ahead and head full as well. Also, we're going to go standard propulsion. No need to use... No need to recharge batteries. Our battery power, pretty much at 100% anyway. Let's go ahead, you get on there, and you go ahead and go to sleep, and you get there, you get there, all right, and I think we're all set. Perfecto. All right, let's go ahead and use some time compression and head that away. Currently making 17 knots. The weather is flat and calm. Excellent weather. Uh, to be spotted. Also, excellent weather <laughs> uh, for aircraft to attack us, so uh, we'll see. We should be able to detect this ship fairly easily, however, with these nice clear conditions. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning here anyway. So we have plenty of daylight as well. Hopefully we catch this vessel. I will... There we go. Currently heading just due west, according to the map. Let's give her a look. 014 according to uh, Oh my god. Schiff no need to shout. Okay, I do see it. It's just it is really just a smudge on the horizon way out there. It looks fairly large, however. That is nice to see. So I'm definitely going to go ahead and try to use torpedoes during this attack. See, I have all electrics as well, so that worked out beautifully here. Looks like she actually is heading on a course of around 280, it seems. I was pretty accurate with that. Uh, let's go ahead and mark her position now. And let's go ahead and change course to just 280. Oh boy. This is exciting here. Alright, and we have another mark. Let's go ahead and plop that down there and see what the course is. So it looks like 284 degrees. That, it seems, just great with me. Let's go ahead and plot that. Two... What the... Am I... 284. <laughs> Sorry, it's very hard to count the lines there. That doesn't look right. More like that. 283, huh? Yeah, that should be fine. Good, close enough for government work. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and try to catch up here. The ship is very much in front of us. It looks like she's heading medium speed, so probably around 10 knots. Let's go ahead and get the Yuzo up here. And take a look, see if I can identify the ship. It kind of looks like an Empire-type freighter. Uh, get that out of here. No, not a warship. Yeah, it kind of looks like an Empire-type freighter. Or a cam freighter. Uh, they look very similar. Let's see here. I hope it's not a cam freighter. Although, I highly doubt it. That's kind of a British thing. Uh, with the catapult and the hurricane <laughs> on top. Uh, yeah, I don't, I'd don't. i rather not encounter that right now. That, that would be preferable. See, this is the cam freighter. There's the catapult right there. Uh, they used rockets as well to launch the aircraft off. And uh, it was mostly used in a convoy support role. And I think I skipped our prey. It could be something else, but uh, just from afar, it kind of looks like 
there we go empire type freighter i'm gonna go ahead and plug that in for the time being because that's really it really looks like that to me from way out here so this ship is fairly far away i'll probably cut here and uh get back to you guys whenever i'm a little bit closer on our intercept i'm probably going to break visual contact since it is so sunny and bright i do not want this uh this merchant catching a whiff of me and uh botching my entire attack so I'm going to go ahead and probably break off and uh, try to go around and uh, intercept her. Well, I just made a little turn away, and uh, she's engaging us. Of course she is. So let's go ahead and just completely set it south. Bastard. Wow, those guns are opening up at a magnificent range. My god, how far away are we? 10,000 meters. Wow. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and turn away here. Uh, they're very inaccurate at this range as you would expect so I'm gonna go ahead and break off contact completely you know I was in the process of doing that it was literally not even 30 seconds after I ended my uh, last recording and then she started just opening up so I guess I did get a little too close it is very bright and as I can see now I am very close I think I am right with my assumption that this is an Empire type freighter which would make sense we are near quite a few British colonies at the moment so it is very possible, although it could be American as well. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and sail away. It looks like they stopped firing. Maybe we're out of gun range now. Nope, never mind. And there's a shell whizzing towards us as I say that. So we're going to go ahead and break contact. Hopefully I don't get hit. It would be a shame if that thing landed right on top of me. But it looks like they are going to overshoot. Now what I am worried about is a American aircraft getting scrambled to bomb me on the surface so I do need to be prepared for that and make sure my watch crew everyone no one's tired they're all sharp start scanning the skies boys okay so I completely went around this enemy ship and I think she's still zigzagging as we speak so it seems like the captain on board this boat is relatively smart <laughs> I would zigzag till my final destination if I were on that ship Anyway, yeah, I think she still is zigzagging, uh, and she is getting relatively close, but we can go ahead and try to, yep, yeah, she sure is zigzagging. We can go ahead and try to get off our torpedoes here. I am fully loaded with type, oh, no, 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 I don't need to go back full, please. I have the G7Es loaded in the forward tube, so I probably will utilize those since they are wakeless. And I do want to shoot two torpedoes at this merchant ship, so that really rules out my aft tubes because I have a G7A here, and that's going to give away our position, especially in such sunny weather as uh, we're experiencing at the moment. Anyway, the ship should really just fall right into my lap. Let's go ahead and slow down just a bit. You know what? We can uh, go ahead and start backing up as well. As a matter of fact, I think we are going to get awfully close to her. And I'll wait till the ship is closer before we start using our Uyag and setting up our shots. However, in the meantime, we can set up our torpedoes. So I've established this certainly is an Empire type freighter. Uh, the three, the masts and uh, the guns back forward and aft. Uh, it's a fairly distinctive ship. Also, this little thing here. Uh, I know there's a name for that, but anyway. <laughs> We're just going to call it that thing. All right, so we're going to go ahead and shoot a salvo consisting of tubes one and four. Draft on this ship is 6.9 meters. So I'm going to go ahead and set our torpedo to seven magnetic pistol, uh, long range, obviously, since well, we can't really uh, can't really adjust speed on the G7Es here. That should be fine. We're going to go ahead and just plug in eight knots for the time being. I have no idea how fast she's going, but just to get something in there. Also, AOB. Let's go ahead and plug in just 60 degrees, and range will probably shoot at around 900 meters, but I, again, I'll get more precise as the vessel gets closer to uh, the time to fire. And yeah, she is just zigzagging away. Alright, let's go ahead and move forward, just barely, oh my god, we're in business, boys, she stopped. She's going steady speed now, perfect, or steady course, looks like she's maintaining a course of her original course more or less two we'll just you know what for government work we're gonna say two eight zero let's go ahead and get a weapons officer in position god everyone's getting tired every time I check these fools they're all falling asleep on me 
All right, so go ahead and bring that up. So the ship's course is currently 280, like so. And that's going to give her an angle about of 30 degrees at the moment. Mark, that will change drastically as this ship closes. Let's go ahead and lower scope before I get the scope spotted once again. And make sure we are maintaining a decent depth so our conning tower doesn't breach the surface. If our conning tower breaches the surface here, um, we're going to get spotted. There's no getting around that. Why will you not follow the contact? We could ping it. Give me a estimated range to contact. God damn you. Okay, follow nearest sound contact. You... I could say some very harsh words. There's a merchant right there, pal. I'll do it myself. 2,800 meters. Not bad. Go ahead and wait. Thankfully, she has not spotted us. We're maintaining 12 meters. Perfect. Okay, and we're getting nice and close. It's time to really set up our shot as we want it. Let's go ahead and make our turn yeah, as well. Let's turn this boat. And... Get here, scope up. Can you follow the target, please? I hate how he's saying no sound contact. I don't know what he's on right now. There is obviously a sound contact right here and look at that deck gun back there yeah i do not want to mess with this honestly i really should stop slugging it out on the surface with these merchant ships it's just a disaster waiting to happen i know it is it says the speed is medium okay we'll be fine i'm just checking our angle and bow setting go ahead and Give me a precise range to target, if you will. I want this to work. 2,000. Yeah, 2,000. It's definitely going to get closer here. Okay, set. Angle on bow's fine. Speed, and let's go ahead and use the Uyag here. We are going nice and slow. Our turn is not complete. Once our turn completes, we will. And our turn is steadying out now. Let's go ahead and lower the scope until this turn is finished. Uh, if we're turning and trying to get the target speed, it's really going to mess up our our readings. So let's go ahead and up scope. As you can see, we have very limited time to fire to do this. Let's go ahead and start the top, start the chronometer. All right. And we want to keep our scope nice and low on the water because last time we, uh, <laughs> we the merchant ship spotted our scope, which was uh, quite embarrassing, being honest. Okay, definitely British. And look, there's pom poms on the back of that ship right there. Stop. All right, so the length of this ship, I guess I should have checked this out, is 150 meters. She is going eight knots. Lock on target. All right, speed, eight knots. All right, we're going to do a... Oh, wow, we can get a nice spread. Five degree spread here. All right, gyro angle, 24 degrees. Perfect, perfect. Lock that in. So we're going to fire... Oh, man, that angle on bow seems slightly off. Let's adjust that. It is much closer to a 90 degree. It's probably at 80 degrees at... Yeah, it's smack dab at 90, I think. Yeah, I think it's right at 90 almost. Look, the masts are almost aligned. Okay, set. Open tubes. Um, give me one last range of the target. 1,400. Set. Alright. Tubes one and four. Two. Once this hits zero, we're firing. And any second now. Fire! Shit! I unlocked. <laughs> I was watching this uh, the little dial instead of the ship. That's fine. That's fine. Scope down. 
Let's see, run time is two minutes, give or take. All right, well, time to lay in wait. Let's go ahead and go to the external view here and uh, watch our torpedoes swim towards their target. We did have the magnetic pistol, so this could be a hit or miss here. There they are, going away. Looks like they're running hot straight and normal. We'll see. Go ahead and use a little bit of time compression here. Although, we can... Oh, that's awesome. Swimming towards the target. And that looks pretty good. The angle is actually a little off. It looks like... Yeah, it's not great, but they're magnetics. It looks like we might hit right in the... Torpedo Shit! Oh! <laughs> Blew up her propeller. Alright, so she's completely immobilized. Probably. I mean, that looks pretty damning. <laughs> uh, thank God for magnetic torpedoes. And then we also had one that hit smack dab in the center. However, it was a dud because of that kind of, well, let's face it, crappy solution. That was not my best effort, but we hit the hole and just uh, no explosion. And it uh, looks like she, I don't know if she's really going to take on much water from that. But... Whoa, whoa, spotted my scope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if she's really going to be too damaged from that. Uh, a second attack might be in order, although she might just be stationary. And if that's the case, it's going to be very easy to plug a, another torpedo right into her. And I can use my steam torpedo if we do that, which would be ideal. Let's see, it looks like the ship is moving slow. It possibly is just drifting around. We'll see. I'm going to make sure those guns don't train on me. I think she was just drifting. So we're going to go ahead and swing around here. And I am indeed going to... Is the ship still going? Looks like it's going faster than I am. Alright, let's go ahead and maneuver here. Okay, she stopped. Perfect. This is going to be uh, Coupe de Grasse here. Go ahead and swing around. And steady out at around 1A0. Should be good. Let's go ahead and slow down and take a look here. Oh yeah, that ship is not looking too great. Alright. Not the best angle, however. Let's go ahead and adjust that. We'll go ahead and maneuver around to get into a better angle. Although it does look like... Ah, oh, wow, she's really not listening. That was not an effective hit whatsoever against the ship. Uh, it did immobilize her, however, but beyond that... Uh, it was not much. Let's go ahead and mark the ship's position and lower our scope. And just keep on maneuvering around here. And just align our stern. This is a good opportunity to uh, discharge one of our stern torpedo tubes. And let's begin backing out. She's at around a thousand meters. That'll be fine, actually. Let's see, which one is our other? Steam tube number six. Lucky tube six. Oh, that's perfect right there. Don't want to botch this up. This draft is six meters. We're going to go ahead and set it to two here. Two meters speed, fast, impact pistol. And let's go ahead and give me a one ping. One ping only. 1,300, so pretty much the same distance as our uh, last attack. Perfect. Angle on bow, even though it's not necessary. Speed is, in fact, zero lock. And we have lined up perfectly. Perfectly. Here we go. Time to fire and give the coup de grace. So, tube six, fire. Oh, he's yelling. Okay, that's fine. I forgot to open the tube. That's okay as well. Tube six away. Scope down. Let's take a look. This time we get to track it on the surface. It's nice and easy. That's the, the plus side of the uh, bubble trail. It makes it easy for me to uh, watch the pretty explosions. 
Anyway, this is certainly going to be a hit. I mean, we're pretty much square on. It looks like the angle was a little off 90 degrees, but good enough for me. Hopefully good enough for this torpedo. torpedo there we go, on. right in the middle. Perfect. And it looks like it started a fire on board. Let's take a look here. Yeah, it's definitely pom-poms. That's kind of intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty heavy armament. Uh, might be a little scary to get hit by that in a U-boat. Well, I don't know if that'll be enough to sink her. However, I'm just gonna... I will stick around here, because I do want to avoid surfacing the boat and deck gunning her, especially with that type of armament. I have been getting a little a little risky with my uh, deck gun attacks uh, against these armed merchant ships. And it, I really have a feeling one of these days I'm gonna do it and it's going to come around and bite me in the ass. And I really would prefer this career not to end by getting sunk by a merchant vessel. Unless it's a Q-ship. If I get sunk by a Q-ship, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> that'd be an awesome way to go out. Uh, but I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I'll actually... I actually have never seen one in-game. I know they're there, but I've never seen one. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and watch this ship. It looks like she is listing. Uh, she is getting lower in the water. I'm uh, just watching the water line here. And it looks like she might be rolling, but uh, we'll see. I'll keep an eye on her and also keep an eye on any other activity that might come here. I'm sure they're sending rescue ships as we speak and destroyers to pick up survivors, so we'll see. I will keep you folks updated as usual. Well, the sun is now starting to set, as you can see, and also weather conditions have gotten significantly worse. And this freighter is refusing to go down so i think i'm gonna have to shoot another torpedo into her uh if it were if the sea state hadn't gotten worse i would have used a deck gun but i wanted to avoid that so i waited around and uh this is what i got oh jesus oh boy going all over the scope there all right well let's go ahead and uh give me a ping to the target 1000 Set speed is zero. We're gonna shoot forward torpedo tube just for fun. Everything looks good. All right, scope. Uh, we're gonna do magnetic pistol. We're also gonna shoot at. I'm doing magnetic because this is just this. This is just weird. So we're gonna go ahead and try a magnetic pistol. I'm not sure if this will work because we're not really hitting the hole of the ship. And that guy on that pom pom needs to really stop shooting at me. So, open tube number two. We'll see if this uh, hits. Let's just check the map for good measure. It looks fine. Tube two, fire. Please? There we go. Man, this ship has consumed a lot of torpedoes. <laughs> Although one was an absolute dud, so, and that actually looks like it's running extremely deep. Much deeper than I would have liked. Uh, and that's not going to hit at all. That's way too deep. Yeah, that's going to go right underneath the hull of that ship right there. Watch. Oh my god. Okay. Tube 3 impact. Shallow. Just set. 3 meters. Open tube 3. Oh my god. This one better work. All right, tube three, fire. They're all yelling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. I think, I think that's better. Nope, it went deep again. Well, I think this ship has just deserved to live at this point. Yeah, it's gonna go right under as well. The weather is completely screwing this up. Yep, yeah, right underneath the ship. So I'm gonna go ahead, I guess I'll just hang around and see if she sinks. I'm gonna give it another few hours, and if she doesn't sink, I'm gonna go, because this has been an absolute waste of ordnance here. I'm actually kind of irritated that the ship is not going down. It probably would be going down in real life, but, uh, or at least it would have abandoned it. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and continue to maintain contact and see if she goes down. I'm not launching any more torpedoes at that, because that is absurd. <laughs> Well, it's been a while, as you can see. The sun is completely set, and this ship is not going down after four torpedoes, I think, in total we launched at it. I don't even remember anymore. Uh, we had three duds, though, I think. Uh, one hit the ship and bounced off, and then the other two just ran deep. And a lot of that has to do with the weather conditions. Here, 
Um, I, I'm very wary to set my torpedoes too shallow in these sorts of weather conditions because they do tend to slam into a wave and prematurely detonate. But also, whenever I set them a little deeper, they tend to uh, run deep as we saw there. So I'm going to go ahead and try to set them very shallow next time and just, I guess, hope in weather conditions like this. But this ship is just being extremely stubborn. I'm sure she'll go down eventually, but um, we're running low on air and battery power and uh, patience. So we're going to go ahead and let this ship go and put her down as just one stubborn Empire-type freighter. Our boat is going to go ahead and meander away and follow our course here. Maybe the weather... You know what? I'm going to go ahead and mark this position and come back for later just in case. Uh, maybe the weather will clear up soon and we can come back with the deck gun. I, I kind of... Man, I'm really kicking myself for not just surfacing the boat in front of her. Because it doesn't look like she had any armament in the bow and deck gunning the ship and sending her to the bottom instead of shooting those torpedoes. But... Oh well, uh, by the time I <laughs> was thinking about that gunning her, the weather had changed and uh, Mother Nature was playing against us. So we're going to meander away, get out of this area. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here. Thank you all for watching. As always, this is Wolfpack345 signing off, and I will see you guys on the next episode.